Happy Halloween. Dia los muertos. The day of the dead. I don't know, hallelujah festival, whatever you call it, is that. What's up? How you doing, Ray of Sunshines? I am your girl, Talisa Ray, wife, style coach. We are reviewing Ready to Love DC. I've decided to say that versus the season because Ready to Love and On Be Tripping. We all know that there's really been five seasons, but they keep talking about four. So I don't want to get y'all mad and confused. We just going to say DC. Boom. Uh, out of your comfort, comfort zone, episode number four. So as you can see, I am dressed up. I love dressing up. Okay, if you follow me on Instagram, you would see what I was last night. Okay, I was a cake, 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 nonetheless. Okay, so last week we said goodbye to cute young Carrington. We know that he has uh, some growth to do, some growing to do. Probably needs to get him a girlfriend or two. Uh, you know what I'm saying? Get some experience. No, learn how to talk to people. That's what we know about him. But this episode, y'all forgive me because I want this to be like, like that, like one cricket, one knot. Nevertheless, it's cool. Um, so this this episode, we see the fellas in the gentleman's lounge, and Tommy is like, "Hey yo, it's your turn. One lady has to go." But take these women out on dates and do things that are not your norm. Get out of your comfort zone. Uh, don't take them to the dinner and a, and, and a sexy dinner. Like, please and thank you. Like, I don't, I, I mean, I like sexy dinners. I like being able to get dressed. I like to go out and do those kind of things. But one thing I know for sure is I don't want to just be eating, looking at you all the time. Like, I, I have come to realize that I like doing shit but that's not what we're here for so we see aisha and frank first oh wait let me back up and tell you that i had the pleasure of watching some of this episode with some of my good good judies deshaun and mona honey part of my tribe and i'm gonna share some of their opinions honey because we kikied on a couple of these i ain't gonna tell you everything but i'm gonna tell you some of the things so Hold on, gotta get a little comfortable. There we go. So we see Aisha and we see Frank. Frank looks like a little bit of a rat, like a like a woodland creature right up in here. But he's attractive to some. And for those of us that may not find him as attractive, what we've come to realize, Deshaun, uh, Mona and I, that he is going to probably make someone a great partner, a great spouse. If you could get past um, aesthetics, if he's not your Jones, right? If you can get past aesthetics, he's going to be great for someone, okay? I like the essence of people. That's what's a, what I'm attracted to. Let me say that. Um, and then, so we see them together. Aisha is like, yo, we connect you know, we have chemistry, the chemical, the chem, the energy, <laughs> the sexual energy is there. But I want to see if we can connect on a deeper level, emotionally, something other than just physical attraction. Um, so they play pool, which we know. I mean, if you've ever played pool and then you don't know how, it can be a very sensual, very intimate moment because the man comes up behind you and he kind of shows you how to shoot pool, but we see that that's a scene every season. They ain't, they ain't come up with nothing new. I need them to start coming up with something new. Ready to love. Y'all need me to send y'all some date ideas? Y'all got some date ideas? Let me know down below in the comments, like what kind of dates you like to go on outside of the norm. Pool is outside of the norm, but it seems like the norm for ready to love. Anyway, so I did like that um, he shared with her why he was attracted to her, her confidence, um, of course, that she was beautiful uh, th and that they had an initial connection, but, you know, that she's a great mother. You know, he said things outside of just her looks, which I think I appreciated and so did Aisha. I'm trying not to say Aisha because of my ray of sunshine, Aisha. She was like, that gets on my nerves. Like She wasn't talking about me, but she was like, that was the thing that people did her whole life. Anyway, so I'm trying to be mindful because I'm sure it gets on Aisha's nerves. Um, Let me see. 
And then I wrote down that I actually think they're kind of cute together. They're kind of fun together. Their, their energy matches one another. Listen, and it is something about a photo booth, honey, and a photo booth opportunity with a bae, with a boo, with a love interest that does something to the, like it kind of connects you and does something to the energy. So I think that that was my favorite part of the date because you get to be fun and playful and silly, but sexy. You know, you could do all of these things and show all of these sides of your person personality with three photos right normally you end up doing like six because we could be like let's do this let's do like you get to show the sides of you that people don't normally see in a photo booth like i like photo booth activity dear future bays current bays i like photo booths okay so next we see carrie and tyrone and you know carrie wants to know what's what okay like she needed to have I'm not going to say closure because closure, y'all just started dating, but she needed to understand where this energy was coming from. And if you've been rocking with me for a while, you know how I feel about closure. Why do I want to tell you? Why do I need somebody to tell me twice that they don't want me? Why? Oh, right. Exactly. We don't. So hold on. I moved too fast. She said that she felt mishandled after the coldness. That the way he delivered, that he didn't want to see her anymore, was not appropriate. That did not feel good, right? It's fine to share the message, but the way it was delivered, um, she wasn't receptive to. And as I think about that more, are you really receptive when someone, like, I mean, are you not receptive, but are, are you really going to feel like, oh, he handled me well, or she handled me well, they handled me well when they broke up with me? No, nah, not if you hurt, you're going to always think, but you're going to always, your first initial reaction going to be like, do they see me? I know, what? I don't understand because I'm the one should have been leaving. Like nine times out of 10, if it's not a mutual, friendly, amicable situation, that's how we feel. I'm just keeping it a band. You, it, It's a little uncomfortable, but I guess for me, the delivery would soothe it, but it's still uncomfortable. Okay, so... um. He told her that she started showing aggressiveness. She was like, uh, uh, aggressiveness. Please expound. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't like that word. Me either, girl, especially as it relates to a black woman. Why we got to be aggressive, sir? So as he continued, he began to define it as the way, uh, like her body language would show when she, in her, in her disdain, when he was hollering at somebody else. Listen, it's twofold. One is the fact that you are dating other people and it is a human reaction for us to be jealous, right? But we also need to work through what that feeling is, why we feel that way. Is it a valid emotion? Should I be carrying this? On the other hand, I mean, yo, she know everybody dating other people. Me too, sir. I plan on dating other people. Like, so <clears throat> I don't know if that was, for me in the moment, I was like, I don't think that this is really a good response. Um, he said, uh, after listening to him, I, I wrote down aggressiveness was the word, wrong word choice. Like, cause he was like, oh, you texted me after my date late and asked, are you still interested in me? She wanted clarification. How is that aggressiveness? I don't know. Maybe the text message was, was, what was, wasn't like, I don't know. How do you feel about that though? Like, are you still interested in me? It's just a check. So I know not to, for me, the way I'm looking at it and through Carrie's eyes, it's just a check to see whether or not I should be continuing to try and show this interest in you, which is what she is saying. I wasn't being aggressive. I was showing you that I was interested. I was putting myself out there. Hence the reason why a lot of women don't like to put themselves out there because uh, I don't want to look stupid after I didn't say it what I said. I mean, I'm working on being a little more forward when I like someone, side into people's DMs because it seems to be working for people. I, I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm, I'm almost there. <laughs> I'm almost there. Mm, probably not. But she said to him, you could have said in the beginning on the phone that day that you were interested in more than more than one person, more than me. And then she was just like, you know what? You're not clearly understanding what I'm saying. I would agree that he wasn't hearing it. He didn't understand that she was saying, it was your delivery, sir. It was cold. And I think that that's, 
I said this one other time. We can't really tell people how to feel or how to apologize or to receive what we're saying. We can only hope that we are providing enough clarity so you understand what the issue was and why I was hurt. That's always my thing. I want you to understand why I was hurt. And so I'm hoping that you hear it when I clarify and that you don't just block me out and choose to hear what you want, right? Because then that helps the healing process for me. Because now you, in her mind, you know, was it that I was tripping? Was it he was being genuine? Like it's a lot of things that go through your mind if the person is not addressing what the issue you have is. I'm going to keep going. So Corey sets up a, a skate date to include Cornelius, Courtney, and Camille. And I'm all like, this Cornelius, Courtney, and Camille is going to end up being a love triangle? Is that is that what we're going to end up seeing? Because I don't know. Um, I wrote down that Camille needs to calm the entire fuck down. Relax, breathe, and go and get to know some of these other guys. But y'all said she was acting, so, and it's bad acting is what y'all said. I ain't say that, because I didn't think she was acting. I thought that maybe she was that damn possessive. Let's hope it's an act. Um, so, I feel like Tommy likes Corey a lot. But I think now, I see now that the reason is, he's a Kappa, and I believe Tommy's a Kappa too, right? Right, because they talk about it all the time. Uh, uh, Cornelius shares that he's interested in both girls and is glad that Corey is there to run interference with him and Courtney. You don't think he like Courtney? You don't think Courtney's a babe and there are a lot of people that are interested in her? Cornelius, please don't get so full of yourself because you got a beautiful smile and women are attracted to you because of how you exhibit your faith and hopefully what you do in real life aligns. So let's keep going. Okay. So Camille's like, okay, so uh, um, just a general question. You choosing to wait till marriage to move to the next level in your relationship, sex, let's make it plain, um, has that caused a problem? He's all like, oh, no, nah. like if we got chemistry, then, you know, sir, it could cause a problem for a woman that wants to not wait. It could, it could. And I get that we teach people what we like, you know. Uh, she shifts her conversation to money. And I'm all like, what sign is she? She's asking everybody about money. And normally we associate money with Capricorns, but Capricorns work hard and they are savers. Okay, she, she's asking about money immediately. And um, I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but I'm just wondering, like, what's her deal? And then we find out she got a gang of student loans. That That's what's up. She got a gang of student loans and have to be purposeful with her money. And then uh, Cornelius is like, I'm a saver. Money's not an issue with me. I'm debt free except for my mortgage. Um, and so I'm all like, oh, he's probably the Capricorn. <laughs> I have to go back and look. If any of you know already, let me know down below in the comments what those two people's, um, Camille and Cornelius's. Is... Let's signs are. I was looking at Camille in her confessional time how she thinks she's already ready to love him. No, ma'am, you, you're ready to love the idea of him and hope, and hope that it stacks up to what it aligns with your check marks and boxes that you have. But don't listen to me because ain't no way you love him. You love the idea of him. You don't know him well enough to be like, I love him. I love him, girl. Now we know why you the Black Widow, probably because you be loving people too soon and then you realize they're not what you thought they were and then you be like, I don't want to be with them no more. That's a real ass plight. That's a real ass thing that I probably think that most women have seen. Like, oh, I really like him a lot. I really care about him. And then down the line, because you ain't do your due diligence and vetting him, you find out, mm, I don't like this. I don't like this. I don't like that. What was I thinking? I didn't see that. That's them rose-colored glasses sometimes because... In the beginning, how they do check, 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 check. You got that checklist, but you're forgetting about, like you got the surface checklist, but you're forgetting about the internal, the character. But I'm going to make this too long if I don't keep going. So Courtney and and Corey seem to be having a good time. And what she said was, he she feels like he's too much, too over the top. But she's like a laid back, quiet, confident. Courtney, girl, I'm with you on that. I love a quiet confidence. I love a man that is sure of himself, but does not have to be loud and boastful with it. I love, when I say I love that, I'd be like, oh, mm -hmm. yes, quiet confidence. 
yes, still and captivate a room without saying anything, but not being so loud and like full of yourself. Anyway, I also see that Corey likes to be in people's personal space. Sir, why are you this close? Like, I feel like he doesn't know boundaries, like spatial boundaries. Like, I don't know you well enough for you to be so close in my face that it looked like you finna lick my neck or my face or even kiss me. I don't know you. Sometimes that'd be fine. You'd be caught off guard. But I don't feel like she was feeling him enough. Like if chemistry is there, cool. But I don't know if she was feeling him enough for that. So, and, and I kind of low-key feel like they let him, they all let him in the space. I'm waiting on somebody to say, oh, hold up, swole up. But he ain't doing that. So she asked him, they're not doing that. She asks him, what do you want in a wife? And I swear all I can hear is bad boys for life. Like, <laughs> cause he want to ride or die. Um, we're going to ride together. We're going to die together. We're going to be, you know, like that's how I felt. Like I felt like, but I know that what he was trying to, to say is that he wants someone that is committed to him, that's loyal to him, that they can, you know, build together. At least that's what I'm hoping that he meant. But child, I don't know. He did make a, um, what one would call a, call a grand gesture by getting her some roses like hiding them and revealing them later one could call that a grand gesture they could so then we see walter and mumin uh she likes him he shared you know she asked if you want to be married again he shares that yes that that is a goal of mine and that he wants to have children um he's 46 she's 30 whatever and i feel like if you want to have children you're gonna have to you're gonna have to have someone younger than you because that's who gonna be able to have children without all the complications and the possibilities of what might not be uh let me see they get really vulnerable in their conversation and i really really enjoyed that i enjoyed the fact that he said him and his father are distant and that he tried reaching out to him, sent him a six page, I'm writing you a four page, but a six page letter, letter. And I'm, he didn't steal it with a kiss. But um, the dad replied with a post-it note, I'm at your sister's. And this is something that he said that I can relate to, to the depths of my soul. Sometimes you have to resolve yourself that that relationship is not going to move forward. Um, and it reminds me of, I don't know, who said it, if I read it, if someone said it to me, but it stuck with me. And it was, we can extend an olive branch to someone, but they have to be willing to receive it. And sometimes they don't even want that shit. Like, so you extend it. And the reason that they're not receiving it is because they don't want the olive branch. They're actually through. And so again, it's just something that resonated in my soul about, you know, all relationships, okay? The kinships, the friendships, the intimate and romantic, platonic, all the ships that you can think of, it made me think about that. Be mindful. Um, and then, so, and then she decides, you know what, I need to open up and I need to share. This is such a great moment. We're connecting on a level that's important. Hello, she follows suit. Like, I want to get to know you. He's sharing something. I'm going to share and, and continue to, you know, you know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all with me. But she says how she has daddy issues, low key. And that that's the reason that she has chosen the wrong men for so long. And that now she is not leading with the little girl or she's not letting the little girl lead her anymore. That she is aware that she still likes older men, right? Cause he's older than her. Um, some of us, including Mona and Deshaun was like, he looks downtrodden. He looks older than 46. Like his face is long and sad. Deshaun was like, oh, you know what? I think he's still grieving. And then it just came down to he looked old. And I was just like, maybe a little bit because his face is like down, right? Down. And I was like, maybe just a little Botox and it'll help lift him up. We, you know, when you get a certain age, a little Botox don't help, don't hurt you. And they say it's good for your headaches. But I understood what they were saying. And another one of you had actually mentioned last week that he looked older than 46 to you as well. Uh, I just thought that everything they said and how they conversed, it was just very like comfortable and easy and profound. So then we see Phil, Dante, Shiloh, and Carrie on a date. Y'all, 
I didn't realize Phil was so fine. Mona disagrees because I pointed out his underbite, but that's a little braces, little braces of fix that little underbite, honey, because I found him attractive. I said, wait a minute. I don't remember Phil. I remember you now, sir. Yes, I do. Anyway, they get together. I'm looking at Dante. He got a whole ass Rolex chain with that red tight shirt and his pants so baggy that they look like karate pants. Like, oh no, oh no, oh no. I, I am not attracted to Dante. I'm not on the show. He probably like, girl, I ain't attracted to you either. It's cool. It'd be like that. But Deshaun was like, yes. Me and Mona was like, it's a no for me. It's a no. It's a no. Uh, it's a no. <laughs> so, hold on. So, we they start the date. And here's Carrie. Let's start off with some stretches. The fellas ain't doing no stretches. So, here we are showcasing our sexuality, our bodies. Which is fine. I mean, if that's what you do, I don't have no problem with it. But is this the message that you're trying to give, portray, when you say you're ready to love? And we know that men are attracted to physicality before anything else. So I get it, low-key. But I just was like, it's it's a lot of sexual innuendos being tossed around here. Anyway, so after they do a little workout, Carrie flirting with Dante the whole time. Shiloh and Phil pulls Shiloh to the side and then Carrie and Dante are together. And let me just start right now with Carrie and Dante. You can see that he was not interested in her and she was just really trying and really trying, like asking questions, trying to learn more about him. And he was not receiving it. He was not, he was not, um, reciprocal. None of that. And I just thought to myself, She's wasting her time. And she was just like, okay, I don't have no more questions. We didn't see him ask questions. Maybe they cut that out. But what I saw, it felt really awkward for me, for her. Like, you don't know how just to be cordial, sir. I want you to go home. I didn't like that interaction. But I also could see how it could be seen as um, a little, maybe, maybe a little too much. But it's because there was a barrage of questions, but she's asking all these damn questions because he wasn't answering. And I kind of feel like that's probably what happened with Tyrone. Like, but we see Shiloh and we see Phil and they are actually connecting together. They are having a conversation that flows easily. She says that she's not big on PDA and honestly, I'm not really either. But if you catch me in the right mood, in the right moment, I'm all for it. And she says she likes the little subtle things. And I thought, great. Now, I don't like that blue hair, but it ain't my hair. But I don't like it. I don't like it. And as we sat and we talked, because she's 33 is what it said, right? That's what it said. Was, was that a typo? That's what I'm saying. And maybe, because I, I can't remember how old she was from the casting special. Has she always been 33 or was that a typo? Did somebody in editing did do that incorrectly? Because the girls, honey, was like, she is not 33. She looks much older than 33. Not that she's not beautiful, but the age and the look doesn't seem to match is what they were saying. I ain't really have much to say about it. But you know what I'm saying? I mean, I ain't have much to say about it. But I could see what they were saying. Pretty girl. Excuse me. Pretty woman. Beautiful woman. But uh, the ladies was like, I don't know about that age. That, that age might not be right. But what I do know, and she was like, you going to be my little teddy bear? He was like, you don't want that. Nope. No, sir. She does. That's what she said. That's what she said. Because I'm with her. I was like, <laughs> hey, Phil good like I don't remember him being that attractive to me feel like the two of them will fill each other's cup so we see Naeem and Zadia they're at a bar creating a mixed drink and the drink that they make is love in chocolate city um so Zadia asks a question what would your friends say about you I'm asking y'all do y'all know what your friends would say about you I know what my friends would say about me I'm dependable, I'm loyal, I love hard. Like, I know what they would say about me. <laughs> I know what they would say about me. But do you know what your friends would say about you? Um, you know, ask them. Describe you in five words. Use five descriptive words. It's something that uh, exercise I do with my clients. So ask your friends, five friends to describe you in five words. And then take a look at that and see if that re resonates with how you see yourself. 
So describe yourself in five words and see if that resonates with your five closest friends or family, the descriptive words that they used, right? May not be the same word, but may have the same meaning. But I like that she did that. And so he said um, that he that his friends would say that he wants to protect, make them feel secure, make them feel safe, loved, and happy. Zadia says she would describe herself as spoiled, but she spoils herself. And so, I mean, I'm all here for being spoiled when you can spoil yourself. We don't necessarily have to have anyone. And, and spoiled is such a... Um, I feel like it's the wrong word to use because it's I'm loved. And I love on myself. So that's why I buy myself nice things. I can afford it and I'm doing it for myself. Like, I think that we should use the word loved versus spoiled. So I understood exactly what she said. I like that he opened his mouth and expressed interest to her. Dotes on her a little bit. Um, there was a lot of physical touch, you know, a little, a little rub on the leg, a little hand like massage, like all of those little subtle things shows that I'm attracted to you. You're attracted to me. I like that she said, I want somebody that is sure about me. How many of us can relate to that? I don't want you to wonder, am I making the right decision? Second guessing whether or not you want to be with me or, you know, I want to know, I, I want the person that's with me, person or persons that are with me to be sure about me. Like, this is her. I want to be with her. I enjoy who she is. I want that surety. I don't want no flip flop and flansy. Today you like, today, today you like me, tomorrow you don't. I want you to be sure about that and to be exhibited in your words and your actions and your deeds and the way you treat me, right? Like, sometimes we got to step, take a step back and figure out if this is something that we want. But once you know it, I want to know that you're sure about me. And when you're not sure about me, if you're second guessing this, then maybe we should go different ways. Um, I didn't like how he wanted to, you know, he, he, when she said that he wanted to be like, oh, you know, and that he, he felt it necessary to tell her that he's going to be dating other people. Sir, so am I. Do you not see how fine Zadia is? And that there are other people that is that are attracted to her? Sir, you are not the only one. I'm not attracted to Naeem. I told y'all I got a thing about teeth. He can fix those. That's great. Without his glasses, no. With his glasses, I was like, he's a hottie and can get it. He needs to keep them glasses on for me. So then we see Tasia and Frank. Frank goes on another date and sees to see Tasia. And this is where I actually realize that he kind of looks like a net, like a like a rat. Excuse me. Um and they're going to create a drink. Like, that's his thing, right? That's his thing. He is a, uh, a uh, I don't know what you call them people, but he owns a beverage line, creating one, all that stuff. Like, so he's, you know, giving it his all. Like, ah, ah, ah. I was like, it's too much for me, but you're showing off your skill. So I would be flattered, except for how wet his armpits under there was. I get it, it's hot. The lights. You had on that, that funny material, which ain't good for breathing. So, of course, you're going to sweat. Should have put on some cotton when you knew you was going to be, uh, uh, like, that's my shit. That's my own bag. That's my own bag. That's my own bag. Because he was sweating. But he asked her to name it. And she said to see her, which is, you know, a play on her name. Um, I said neither of them were all that interested in one another. There was no, like, real, like, sparks flying she was going through the motions and he was too busy look, too busy looking at her and observing and like tearing her apart because he kept saying what no he didn't keep saying but he said all she she every time we started a conversation she would talk about her profession people talk about what they're passionate about the end if you're passionate about something this is her baby you know when people get new babies you'll be excited whether it be a real child or a new car or something, a new house, you'll be excited and are passionate about the things that you're doing with this baby. And I thought to myself, a lot of people seem to keep saying that about her. Not only that, people feel like that in general. And so here's, here's my trick. If you want to learn something about somebody, a lot of times lead in with telling them something about you that you wouldn't want to know. So he's talking about, I want to know about your friends and what you like to do for hobbies and all of this, right? So you talk about what you want. Me and my friend of 40 years, me and my friend of 30 years, 
I'm learning how to skate as a hobby. I fell off my bike in February so that they could be like, oh, really? Well, I do this, that, and the other. You get to find what their interest is as well, right? Like, I don't know. That's just me. You want to know something about somebody? You need to probably give that same information because it's easy for people to reciprocate and know where the conversation is going. You could have led that frank. So now here we are at the end and we're at the gentleman's lounge. And um, Tommy, we don't, I don't, I don't want to use ride or die. Okay. We all need a ride or die. No, 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 no. I'm going to get y'all a ride or die or whatever he said. No, no, no. A lot of us are going to ride in the car, but we're not going to die with you. We're not going to, we're not going to just go along with you while you make these bad decisions anymore. And I know what ride or die means, y'all. I know it's somebody that's going to be there with you through thick and thin. Listen, listen, women of a certain age, we stop saying that. We start seeing the red flags and say, start, we talk about it. We explain it. We say what we see. We see if you're going to make any adjustments. And if you don't, we're out of here. Like, I don't want to, I don't want to be on the roller coaster ride that that's going to be detrimental to my spirit. That's going to be toxic. That's going to have me working on my mental health. That's what I think about every time I was somebody's ride or die. I was always at the end trying to uh, recoup who I was. Remember what I, who I was and what I was doing and what I was about. Like, I don't want to do it. I want, I want to be healthy in love. Like, healthy. I want to love in a healthy manner where we can talk about the things that's not working and try and go forward and move to that. So now it's time to find out who y'all feeling? And Corey says he's feeling uh, Mumin. Mumin was at the top, but Car Courtney is a dark horse. Like, she's coming in, and he shares, you know, the grand gesture that he did. When he picked the flowers and wrapped them himself. You know, for men, that's the big deal. For women, let me say that Courtney loved it, and I love it, too. I love the fact that he brought her flowers. I love flowers. Flowers speak to my soul. They bring me joy. So, dear Future Bays. I like flowers. <laughs> I like plants. I like the, even I know, I know flowers die, but they smell good and they just permeate and it just, just does something to my soul. And so, yeah, when you buy me flowers, know that I am extremely, even if it doesn't seem like it on the outside and the inside, I am screaming like, oh my God, I got flowers. Like I'm screaming. I'm real reserved on the outside, but on the inside, I'd be like, yes, bitch, put these in your room. Like that'd be me. Just so y'all clear. When he said that he liked Courtney, you saw uh, Cornelius do a little, little, little hard swallow there. Tyrone, I don't like you no more. Okay, I'm just gonna tell, say it again. Not that it even matters, but it do to me. Um, I don't. Excuse me. Not, let me not say I don't like you. When I say that, I don't know y'all in real life. I don't know the per, this part of. I don't like this part of your personality. Let's clear that up. Let's clear that up for the people in the back. Tyrone says he likes Sabrina and Shiloh is his number one. Said, you know, it's easy to see myself with her. You know, conversations are easy, etc. Phil's honesty to me in this moment made him even more attractive. Like the way he was able to be like on, on the real. We knew what we knew what we signed up for. We know what's up. But it is hard to hear when someone has an, uh, a connection with someone that you are feeling too, you know, he's feeling Shiloh. And so uh, he said that right after he said that, because he's like, you know, it kind of, it do a little, uh, it do a little, uh, like, you know, the little competitive part of you might come out. Uh, so it, there's that. And that's what I, I appreciated him being honest. Like I ain't going to sit here and pretend like I don't feel away hearing him say he liked Shiloh. I like her too. Like, Cause she pretty dope. She got good energy. Like I can see it. Be honest with yourself. That's the first thing you have to do. Cornelia said Camille um, is his biggest, I don't know what this I wrote on here, but he also likes Courtney well as well. Um, he said that, oh, his biggest connection. <laughs> and he also likes Courtney as well. But he also starts saying how, you know, all these things about her that he likes about her. Um, but that he needs to be watchful of that possessive part of her. I don't know if he said it then or before, but he said it. Y'all seen it. Y'all heard it. Walter said, Mumin, that uh, the conversation was easy and he wasn't expecting that. I haven't seen him go out with Sabrina yet. I don't have Sabrina gone out with anybody yet. Sabrina might have been serious about let's talk on the phone first before we go out on the date because I ain't seen her. I mean, they was all covered in her and I ain't seen it yet. So, mm mm. Naeem said that him and Zadia had a major connection. 
Um, and this is where I was like, he need to keep them glasses on because I find him attractive with the glasses on versus without them. But he working on me. Now they say, who you not feeling? Frank talks about Tasia. He says it's not enough energy there. Then Naeem comes back and he says she smiles with her mouth, but not with her eyes. So to me, it seems disingenuous. Like there's a disconnect. Everything is in her eyes. Everything is in her eyes. It is. It's in our eyes. Even if you are not as expressive as I am, I give y'all all this emotion in my face and with my body language. Even if you're not this expressive, if I like you, it's going to be here in my eyes. If I'm a nut, it's here in my eyes. Like, you know when you look in somebody's eyes. It's just that simple. Um, but then he said it repelled me. Sir, is repelled a good word to use? Like, that's not, I don't, repelled? So Tommy asked Tyrone, like, what happened with Carrie? And this dude said, I just, I like somebody else <laughs> and chuckled. I thought to myself, that's not what you told that lady. And that was very dismissive. I didn't like it. And you could see in Tommy's eyes that he didn't like that shit either. It was not okay. It was not okay. Tyrone, it is not okay. And I don't like you. Cornelia says Sabrina because we have had not had any time and she doesn't want any kids. Men know what their non-negotiables are right from the top. And I'm in agreement. If you don't want kids, if you want kids and she don't leave her alone, dear future bays, I don't want no more kids. Come with them already assembled, okay? Um, and I really don't date men that don't have children because they don't have the compassion when shit happens. So I like that. That's his non-negotiable. Ladies, fellas, give me one. I ain't going to even ask you because I normally tell my clients, give me five non-negotiables. And that's what you stick to. Think about them hard. Don't just say, them rattle some shit off the top of your brain because they end up doing something else that you don't like. So give yourself five non-negotiables and a bonus. What is, give me just one of your non-negotiables down below in the comments because I be wanting to know. I be wanting to know. Somehow, I, sometimes I be like, oh, that's a good one. So let me say that to you. Oh, that's a good one. I'm going to say it now and probably in the comments if you tell me what one of your non-negotiables are. So Ke Naeem had the responsibility to talk to Carrie and Cornelius had to talk to Tasia. Um, and I feel like he was just like straight to it. Like, and I don't understand why anybody would think that this was a date when we at the end of the week or whatever the week is consisted of. Um, but pretty much said, <laughs> the fellas feel like you got a wall up and it's off-putting. And I kind of feel like that might be true from the first episode when they put her on the bottom. She's still a little tainted from that and has not healed and recovered from that. Um, but they said that she was still ready to love and that she doesn't have to leave yet. But I think that this was an eye opener to her. She was like, I don't know what they seeing. Uh, Mona was like, I, she does not um, appeal to her. I forget. I don't even have that paper next to me, but. It was something about, like, she's asking the questions, but she's not present. Like, that probably wasn't the right thing either. Mona, tell us down below in the comments. Um, then we see, uh, well, Carrie and Naeem. And Naeem is a little softer, takes a little bit more, a little more, a little further. And, and, and says that the fellas feel like they aren't uh, making any strong connections and making any strong connections with any of them. Um, you know, and she just said, you know, I feel like it wasn't enough time. This goes to what the, she says, she shared says all the time, which is, um, they dismiss people too soon because you don't have enough time to get to know them in order to build whatever it is that they're looking for. So, or whatever it is to see what their personality and stuff is really like. And so she said, you know, I feel like, um, it, it wasn't enough time you know, for you guys to get to know me. I hadn't even talked to all the fellas, but I really feel like she was gracious um, in her, in accepting what he was saying and just was like, I know that I am ready to love and he just, just wasn't here. Okay, so that ends the episode. Feels like I was talking longer than normal and I'm sorry, I don't know. Maybe it's because of the paper I used. I don't know. I was trying to keep it down to like three minutes a person or something so it could be 30 minutes or three minutes a date. 
but that's not what happened. That is the end of my review. You guys, let me know down below in the comments what you think about this episode and the people and where we are headed. Who's your favorite? Who you could do without? I want to know. I, I want to know. I want to know it. I want to know all of it. Give me all the tea. If it's your first time visiting my channel, definitely click the subscribe button to become a ray of sunshine. Right next to that is a notification bell. Click it too so you are alerted of the videos I upload moving forward. Please and thank you. Like, you're not going to know I, I put up anything if you don't hit the subscribe button and if you don't hit the notification bell. The two go together. Um, like the video because you like me. Because you like my bunny ears today or my little bunny nose or my bow tie or my hot pink lipstick or that I got my hair kind of mohawkish to the side today. Last but not least, share this video with your friends so that they can come kiki with us and talk about these people that we don't really know what their real life situations are like. We don't really know what's really going on in their lives, but we're going to talk about what they're showing us on the screen. Come on, bring them over here. Bring them out, bring them out on over to Talisa Ray's channel. I love you in real life and want every good thing that God has in store for you, even if you don't know what that is for yourself. Hugs and kisses and lots of love. I will see you on the next review.